Is he seventeen? Seventeen. All right. So um, we've been intentional. We've been talking about tithes and offering and being intentional. And so Ethan said a couple of weeks ago. He said, you know, Miss Sharon, since I've been tithing, I realized that I've been having one job opportunity. And then Brother Hagen said, since I've been tithing, I was able to get me a car. So they're seventeen and nineteen, maybe. 18, 20 now. 20. 20 <laughs> when you're that young and you're able to recognize that yes. giving yes. and sowing and tithing yes. brings increase, it's major. Yes, it is. Just want to share that. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. There, well, last week the Lord took us kind of back to some things and give us a new perspective on some things. So, and he said it was going to take me several weeks to finish this. So, well, plus finish is not a good word. But, uh, it's a lot of information uh, and a lot of revelation uh, so, and a lot of confirmation. I want to kind of just lay a little bit of groundwork. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. Thank you, Lord. Solomon, we talked about this last week, but we didn't go to the chapter and verse, but Solomon wrote this Ecclesiastes. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes with the purpose in his heart of finding out what life was all about. Why was he here? Why am I here? What, what, what is life? What is it about? Well, you, if you read the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, you'll get to the last part of it where he says, in other words, I've, I've researched and inquired into all this, and when it all what it all comes down to is the whole purpose. Let, let me just turn over there and read it to you. I, I don't want to mess this up. In the King James, he says, after his after who knows how long he was researching and studying this. At the end of his research and inquiring, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. King James says, fear God, but that word, when Jesus quoted that same word, it was worship God. So he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, worship God, and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Now, let me read the Amplified translation of that. All has been heard. The end of the matter is fear God, revere, and worship Him, knowing that He is, and keep His commandments, for this is the whole of man. The full original purpose of his creation, the object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, and the adjustment to all inharmonious circumstances yes. and conditions under the sun, the whole beauty of every man. Mm -hmm. You were created to worship God. It's, it's our Sorry. Yeah, that's Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that all? It's the, it's the object of his creation. The object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness. If you wake up and you're sad in the morning, worship God. Amen. Just if you have to get down on your knees, lift your hands beside your bed before you start your day off. Amen. And begin to tell him how awesome he is. Yes. Tell him how amazing and awesome he is. 
and beyond my ability to express in words how awesome you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let's go back to Ecclesiastes. I just had to read that. It's so good. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. Says the thing that hath been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Thank you, Lord. So if you think you've come up with something new, you need to think again. <laughs> remember, remember what one of my old father of all horse trainers I call him that, uh, that came up with uh, that began to research and study about natural horsemanship yeah. remember what he said he said it's what you learn after you know everything <laughs> <laughs> Amen. that means the most it's what you learn after you know everything that means the most I met a guy like that recently. I don't know if he's learned anything yet, though. <laughs> he just thought he knew everything. All right. Now, we talked about, uh, for a few weeks, we've been talking about John the Baptist. We've been talking about uh, former and latter rain. If you were not here last week, it's kind of, I don't know how we're going to catch up here, but we'll have to get you caught up. But uh, real, real quick, you know, a few months back, God began to deal with me and say, we need some John the Baptist intercessors. That's what I kept hearing in the spirit. I kept hearing John the Baptist intercessors. Now, just remember that as we go on. Now, God said, if, if you want to know what's going to happen, look at what has happened. That's my paraphrased version of that. Uh, I think we say all the time, history repeats itself. Right? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, there's so many directions we can go here. <laughs> now, so I'm going to have to go back and all, all you people that have been here for a Paul has heard this numerous times probably, but I'm going to have to go back again to get this going, get it in the right direction. Remember what has happened is what's going to happen. Praise God. Now, okay, in, uh, is it, let me say this too, in uh, March of this next year, the Oasis will be 20 years old. It was conceived in March of 03. It wasn't necessarily birthed yet, it was conceived though. <laughs> but it, anyway, uh, when when we started the Oasis, my apostle, I call him, I, some people call him pastor, but he, he was not really a pastor, he was more of an apostle. And uh, by the way, the Scripture in Ephesians 4 mentions fivefold ministry prophets, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And uh, the one that the church today recognizes the most is pastor, and the one that's mentioned the least in the Bible is pastor. <laughs> Matter of fact, pastor's only in, the word pastor, the title pastor, is only in the New Testament one time. And it's in that scripture I just quoted. He's given some in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. So, and it's mentioned eight times in the book of, of Jeremiah. But, so nine times it is mentioned, and that's a good number. So, okay, so in when we started the Oasis, uh, my apostle that I've been uh, Training under, if you will, he had been my mentor, my teacher, 
my apostle for 15 years. And uh, when we started the Oasis, he, he, he had been, he began to go out and travel more and teach on the road and stuff. So, so he started a class in Huntsville in the evenings on the prophetic. So, uh, naturally, I was going. <laughs> so, so, I was on my way. I was on my way. I just told you this recently, but I'll say it again. I was on my way. Let me go as fast as I can. Come on, boy. <laughs> uh, I was on my way to this prophetic meeting. I, I, it was in the spring of 2004. So, part of the revelation that I just been getting, it took me 18 years to get it. <laughs> but on my way to the meeting, I heard the word of the Lord coming to me, and it said, he said, this evening, in your time, and I'm, well, I couldn't miss a few words, 18 years, but, but this evening in your time, when it begins, no, he said, when it begins to rain in your time this evening, it will be as it was, it will be as it was, he emphasized that, as it was when Jesus and John the Baptist walked planet Earth together at the same time. I, I'm just thinking about what I've just heard. You know, uh, I have no idea what he's talking about. I mean, I can go back and see how it was, but that was in the natural I can read about, but what the spiritual of what he's talking to me about. So I go into the meeting. It was a good meeting. Uh, learned some things. On the way back home, I wasn't even thinking about what the Lord had just spoke to me, or I believe it was the Lord spoke that to me. I was not thinking about that at the moment. I was thinking about, I'm going home. I probably hadn't even eaten anything, so I'm thinking about probably filling my belly up or something, you know. And so I'm driving up the road, and all of a sudden, the largest, huge, most large, I don't know how to say it, drop of rain splattered on my windshield right in front of me. I'm driving the same red full truck that I'm driving right now. It's just paid for. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this drop of rain, it splattered. It went, Pah! and when it hit it, it was just big, you know. It hit and just spread out. And I looked at my clock on my truck dash, and it was 9.01. I don't want, I never, I went, and we talked about this last week, but I've been through 18 plus years not even thinking about that. I got, I get a text from a friend that I haven't talked to in months, and I think there's reason I haven't talked to him in months, but I haven't, hadn't talked to him in months, and uh, just a week or so ago, I get this text. And he said in the text, I, this is all it said, I believe the 901 prophecy. <laughs> That's all my text said. And that was, if that was a prophecy, it was 18 years ago plus. Uh, and so, The Lord began, after I got that, I know that was ordered by the Lord that he sent that to me. Because after I got that, he started dealing with me about going back to that and digging deeper into it. So, and we talked about it last week. I hadn't even thought about, see, I'm, you know, I'm big on numbers. But uh, it happened at 901. Now that big, huge drop of rain, I never saw anything like that, but then it began to rain. After that, you know, you, every once in a while you see a big drop or two hit and then it start raining. 
And it just settled in and rained the rest of the night that night. So, uh, you know, I, I kept inquiring of the Lord and, and kept researching and inquiring. And he began to show me that, that, that this particular thing he was talking about had to do with the prophetic anointing that Elijah walked in and the prophetic anointing Jesus walked in. And, and he was using the similitude of the former and latter rain. And so then I began to research and inquire about that, and I found some amazing stuff. I mean, it was just so awesome. So I just kept researching and inquiring into that. And he took me the scriptures, some of them that we've read before. Uh, but just last Sunday morning, while it was last Sunday, early in the morning, while it was still dark, you know, that's when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. Early in the morning while it was still dark. So uh, I began to go back to those scriptures that he had shown me. And when I got to meditating on the text that I've got, I believe the 901 prophecy, that's all it said. <laughs> Didn't say who it was or anything, I just, but I, I recognized the number. So it just hit me last Sunday morning about five o'clock while I was researching and studying that that was the second watch of the night from the scripture. Second watch of the night on our time is nine to mid 12 a.m. Six, uh, six to nine, the first nine watch, to nine to 12, the second watch, 12 to three is third watch, and three to six a.m. is fourth watch. And that's, uh, that's how the Romans did it, you know. And Jesus always used that to explain things to us. So, I had not, it didn't hit me until last Sunday morning, but then I've been researching that, and I had just a little thing. I'll, let me read you some something about the second watch. Y'all interested? Yeah. Mm -hmm. During this watch, intercessors are able to impact the spiritual realm before the enemy gets ready to wreak havoc. That's what is said about the second watch. Uh, Psalm 119, 62 says, At midnight I will rise to give you thanks and, uh, to, and to thank you because of your righteous judgment. It was at midnight that God struck down the firstborn of Egypt, which resulted in his people being released from captivity and set free. So at the end of the second watch, it was at midnight when uh, the firstborn of Egypt was struck down, which resulted in God's people being set free to worship him. Not just set free. Yes. Amen. Set free to and worship, worship him. Yeah. This watch is a time when God deals. Watch this. This watch is a time when God deals with the enemies that are trying to keep you from entering into his perfect plan for your life. Are you getting it? Yes. Mm -hmm. In the natural, in the natural, this time is characterized by deep darkness. In the spiritual realm, the second watch is when diabolical assignments and sabotage from the enemies are set in motion. 
This is why it is important for intercessors at this watch to pray for God's protection over God, uh, pray for God's protection over their families, their cities, and nations. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Yes. Amen. This is also the time for, watch this, for divine judgments, for divine deliverance, and a time for to pray for the economy, pray for the tearing down of walls of darkness and all the wicked structures from our economy, from our educational, religious, and political systems. In 2000. Five in March 26th of 2005, I received a vision and a word from the Lord that said that there was a, a great demon arising in the judicial system of America, the United States. And it was receiving more power and more power and more power. You can imagine where that comes from. But he said for us to bring judgment to that system. Now we're not to judge each other, but we are to judge the demonic realm. Thank you, Lord. We don't judge each other. We don't judge Lord's servant. It's a time to it, divine judgment, divine deliverance, and a time to pray for the economy and in the spirit tear down walls of darkness and all the wicked structures from our economic, educational, religious, and political systems. Amen. We should be praying aloud. Now, you may want to write these things down because we. I believe we may pray at the end of this and pray these prayers. Pray aloud Psalm 59 and Psalm 68, 1 through 4. Pray that God will arise and scatter his enemies. Have a session of praise and worship exalting God. Thank you, Lord. You need to do that by yourself. Amen. You don't have to have anybody with you. You don't have to have anybody to talk to you in the praise of God. Amen. All you gotta do is think about what he's done, and what he's doing, Amen. and who he is. Thank you, Lord. Read aloud Psalm one forty eight. Have a I want to read this again. Have a session of praise and worship, exalting God, and, and what, watch this, commanding all creation to praise Him. See, the Word says all creation is supposed to yeah. praise Him, so when you command that to happen, you're not commanding God, you're commanding God's Word that's already Amen. come to pass. Amen. Read aloud again Psalm 148. I say that again. Pray decrees for this prayer watch or the second watch. Pray this. Father, in the name of Jesus, you save me from mine enemies. You protect me from those who come against me. You save me from those who do evil and from murderers. You are my God. You are my strength. <clears throat> I am looking to you because you are my defender. You love me. You go in front of me and you will help me defeat my enemies. Psalm 59 verses 1 and 10. And then here's what this is second watch prayer here. Psalm 59, 1 and 10, of course, we just said that. I rebuke and loose 
myself and my family from all evil curses, spells, incantations, psychic powers, and sorcery that have attached itself to me and my family line, I declare all these curses are null and void. Amen. We declare all these curses are null and void. Amen. I break off every power of the kingdom of darkness and cancel every proud idea in the heavens that has established itself against your plans in my life, Father, and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. I rejoice in your love every morning. You get up in the morning and just begin to rejoice because he loves you. You have been my place of safety, Father. Mm -hmm. The place I can run to when troubles come. Mm -hmm. I sing praises to you, my source of strength. You are the God who loves me. Yeah. Psalm 59, 16 and 17. Thank you, Lord. 16 and 17. Now, today is not going to be a preaching day. Hopefully, it'll be a teaching day. So, all right. Let's look at something here. This may seem a little disjointed, but it's, it should come together. Now Jesus, you know, Jesus, we read that last week in Luke 12 where Jesus gave a parable and talked about the master coming at the second watch or the third watch. And he said, when I come at the second or the third watch and find my servants watching, in other words, praying, he said, blessed are those servants. Now, uh, Luke, Mark, let's go to Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. <laughs> now, as we read through some of these scriptures, uh, you know, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. Amen. Right? Yeah. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood, we wrestle against what? Principalities. Yeah. Powers, rulers of the darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Those four things. Four, four stages or levels of demonic forces. Now, what did I say, Mark 1? Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. Okay, can I, I'm going to read a few verses. I'm going to follow Brother Larry's example. Amen. Uh, for y'all, those that don't know it, Brother Larry, Larry went home to be the Lord this year, and he was an awesome man of God, and he loved the Word. So when he was reading, when he was teaching and preaching, he never just read one verse. He said, I'm going to read some verses. He would read sometimes two or three pages. <laughs> but he always was good. Amen. Okay, verse 1 of chapter 1 of St. Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. So he would, we, who's he talking about? He's talking about John the Baptist, right? Yes. John the Baptist was to prepare the way. That's what he was doing. He was to prepare the way. 
for the Lord. Or make ready a people. One place says to make ready a people for the coming of the Lord. In other words, he had John the Baptist was an intercessor. John the Baptist was the transitional prophet from the old to the new, or from the first to the last. I, I hate calling the Old Testament the Old Testament because it's not old. It's a lie. It, it, it's the Word of God. And so I call it the first and the last instead of the old and the new. The first and the last. Or former and latter. So he says, so his task, one of the things he was to do was get the people ready. The Lord's coming. Make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Get them ready. Then he says in verse 3 about John, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The frequency and the sound and the vibration. Verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. What was he crying? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. See, he was interceding he was a prophetic intercessory prophet. He, the Bible says that he was a voice crying in the wilderness. He said that about himself in another place. And so he was, he was interceding in this case for Israel and standing in the gap between God and Israel. So, so now he's one, he, he goes out into the wilderness and begins to cry aloud. Prepare ye the way. See, those hearts of those people, a lot of them were stony, hard hearts. So John had to plow up that stony ground. He had to cultivate it, get it ready for the Jesus said the seed is the word of God. So he had to get the soil. See, the, it's the good ground of the heart that produces some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But there's a lot of ground there that's not that good. You need smart soil. But it was, so he, in his intercessory, prophetic intercessory, burden bearing prayer. Like prophetic intercessory burden bearing prayer. prayer. That's a math for you. <laughs> That's really not one of all those saints. So. Prophetic intercessory burden bearing prayer. Sister Leslie's husband that's with the Lord right now, he called it PIB. P-I-B-B. Prophetic intercessory burden bearing prayer. As a matter of fact, that's in my Bible. I've got P-I-B-B -B in that. So, uh, now, let me keep reading here a moment. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you well, Lord, make his path straight. Verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. We, we know that John baptized and it was a tradition for the for that culture, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, that every year at harvest time or just before harvest time, they wanted to get rid of all the sin in their life because they were afraid that it would affect their harvest, their crop, their their finances, if you will. So they went out and confessed their sin to John, say John was a was a prophet, but John was also a priest because he was 
His father was a, a priest of Zechariah, his father. And so, so he was a priest, he was a prophet. He didn't dress like a priest, but he didn't live in a castle or a fine mansion. But uh, anyway, he was he was a priest and he was a prophet. Now, now, let me go on here just a moment. I don't, I don't want to take up too much time on this. Verse 6. You got it? Yep. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. I, I, I want to point out something. You remember when uh, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden? Yes. What, what did God do? God sacrificed an animal and put a skin on it. He covered their nakedness with skin, right? Now watch. John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. He did eat locusts and wild honey. So what his, so he was covered in a hairy garment, had a leather belt on, he girded about, and he ate locusts and he ate wild honey. <laughs> so now, everything that we've studied and researched for the last month or so. When we went to the scriptures where it talked about eating the word of God, every place that we went to, and see there, there's this call, there's a law, a spiritual law called the law of first mention. So when you find something in, where it's mentioned first in the Bible, you always have to go back to that when you find it again to get the full. So, now, let me read that one more time, then we're going to go somewhere else. John was clothed with camel's hair and a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat what? Locusts. and wild wow. wow, honey. So now we go back to the law first mentioned, and there were honeys mentioned, well, not everywhere, but all the places, most of the places mentioned, it's, it's referring to the Word of God. Eat the scroll, he told John on the Isle of Patmos. We read where he told Ezekiel to eat the Word of God. Eat the Word of God. Eat the Word of God. And it'll be sweet like honey. honey. To your mouth and tongue. It'll be bitter to your belly. That means you got to speak it out. When you fill up on the word, you got to prophesy it out. You got to find somebody to talk to. <laughs> so, okay, now, let's, I want to go to 2 Kings, uh, I believe it's verse 8, maybe. <coughs> Is that right? Second King chapter one verse eight. Yep. Okay, here's one. Uh, this is talking about Elijah. Are you ready for this? Yes. Okay. It's talking about Elijah, right? And they answered him. In other words, uh, they had encountered Elijah, and he went to one of these men that encountered him. And went back and told his people what this guy said and they said, you know, what did he look like? Who was this guy that told you all that? And they answered him, he was an hairy man and a girt and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. 
That sounds familiar. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. some resemblance here between Elijah and John. Yes. John was wearing a coat or a cloak or wearing a skin of camel hair. Camel, a camel is a beast of burden, right? You load the camel down, you burden him down whatever you're carrying across the desert or wherever. Prophetic, intercessory, burden, bearing prayer. <laughs> so John wore the skin of a burden bearer. Yes. He was letting, letting us know that he was bearing the burden, in this case, of Israel before the Lord. All right, let's see, where do we go next? Okay, let's go back to Joel chapter 2. I'm... Joel chapter 2. We read last week in the first few verses of Joel, we discovered that Joel's in a situation here about like we are right now. Let me let me uh, let me paraphrase it. What Joel said in the beginning of this book. If it's not one thing that's trying to mess us up, it's another. It's not one thing destroying something of ours or something else. That's basically the way what he said. As a matter of fact, I can read it that quick. He says, hear this in verse 2 of Joel 1. Hear this, you old men. Give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your father? Uh, in other words, he's saying... Has such a thing ever occurred in your days or even in the days of your father that's going on right now? And then he goes on and says, tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation that which the palmer worm hath left at the locust eating. <laughs> so, if the palm worm left in there, here comes the locust and eats it up. Now, now watch, he's not through. And that which the uh, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. So they ain't like, they ain't leave us nothing. They, if one left me a little bit, something else consumed me. You ever been there? Have you ever thought of that? <laughs> so he said, now we, we, so I said a moment ago, when we read scripture, since it's plain and to New Testament Christians that uh, 
that we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, we wrestle against principalities, power, spiritual weakness, and rule of darkness. That's Ephesians 6. So we wrestle against these four demonic levels, or four demonic levels of demonic forces, I guess you could say. You got Satan and he's got these four things under him. Okay, Joel says that the locust, the palm worm, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar has eaten up everything we got. Didn't leave us anything. Notice, though, that all these things, palm worm, canker worm, caterpillar, locust, all of those are locusts, right? We learned this years ago. There are four stages of locusts. Okay, there's four stages of demonic, sounds to me like. Principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, rulers of the darkness. That's what we wrestle against. So by the way, if we're reading the scripture here today that talks about your enemy being a person, it's not a person, it's a principality, power, spiritual weakness, rulers of darkness. So, because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but he uses similitudes and parallels to give us revelation. Right? Amen. All right, now. With that in mind, I know some of you really got your wheels a turn. Let's look in uh, Joel 2. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. That's 21, I'm sorry. Joel 2, 21 is where we're going to start. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beast of the field, for the pasture of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. Is he your God? Amen. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain, and the first month it says but month was added it's italicized it was not there in the original and all the floors shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil that sounds like prosperity to me Amen. see overflow is not just to the top it's running over mm -hmm. And overflow never stops. Yeah. <laughs> overflow of wine and oil. Verse 25, I will. There's the will of God right there. Yeah. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, comma, my great army which I sent among you. Now again, I'll have to stop there a moment and say, we all, you read this, and if you just read it without researching it, to seek the Lord means to research and inquire into my covenant I have with him, and then by right of need, require what I find in my covenant. That's the definition of seek the Lord. He says, uh, what was it? My great army which I sent among you. Okay, now, when we read that, if we just read through that, it seems like he's talking about the canker worm, palm worm, caterpillar, and all that being his great army. Does it not? You have to study to show yourself approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So when I researched this word that was translated army years ago, several years ago, 
when you research something like this, you've got to understand that God does not contradict his nature, if that makes any sense. His nature is not to send locusts, kangaroo, palm worm, caterpillar to destroy and eat up everything that you have or everything that you are. That's not his nature. So when I began, to, I said, something's wrong with me. I'm not getting this. So when I began to research, I dug that word out, that word that translated army, great army, and, and I researched that, and I dug, and I went to the Judaism 101, and... <laughs> I, I said, I'm, I'm not satisfied with this. I got to find the answer. When I got to researching and inquiring, the word that was translated army was a word that also means wealth. Don't shout me down now. I guess I should say Selah. <laughs> it's a word that means wealth. I, watch, watch this. The topic or the subject of this statement that God made here is restoration. Yes. Is it not? Yes. Is it not restoration, what he's talking about? He said, I'm going to restore. We just read last week in Psalm 69. It said, he says, I will restore. Everybody say, God will restore. God, God will, will restore. restore. That which he took not away. That which he took not away. That's a, that's a scripture. God gave me a prophetic word one time and I wrote it down. I didn't know that was in the Bible and about six months later I read that one and I said, well, I, I must have did, I must have heard you. <laughs> his, his topic here is restoration. Everybody agree with me? Yes. yes. How's he going to restore what the canker worm, the locust, the on the worm, caterpillar, and so forth. He's going to restore it with his great wealth, which he's going to send among you. Amen. I don't know why you're still standing. <laughs> I don't know why you're not up. Arise and shine. Yeah. Now, So are we making the connection here? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Canker worm. Against powers. Caterpillar. Against darkness. Rulers. Darkness. Palm the worm. I said, what's the next one? Rulers of darkness of this world. In other words, it's four and four. I got myself confused there a little bit. Canker worm, caterpillar, palm worm, locust, 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 locust. Those four mm -hmm. are prophetic similitudes or parallels or parables. Those four things right there are parables of those four demonic forces that we war against. Does that make any sense to you? Now, the reason that the God that God has been telling me for months here that we've got to have some John the Baptist prophetic intercessory prophets. If you want to see what has happened, look at, I mean, what's going to happen, look at what has happened. Yes. Jesus was not introduced on the scene till John showed up and began to prophesy and speak it. And say, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. See, and Now, this John the Baptist or this Elijah prophet that was John the Baptist or vice versa. 
What did he eat? Locust. What did what did this prophetic intercessory burden bearing prophet have for lunch? Locust. He had locust with honey. <laughs> with the honey or the word of God. I've said this who knows how many times. You cannot eat the locust unless you've filled your belly full of the word of God. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. Amen. But once you're full of that word, you can take on it. Yeah. You can take on the locust, canker worm, caterpillar, and, and palm the worm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Are you getting anything? Amen. Now, he says, I will restore. And now, now watch this about the wealth. The army, yeah, the great wealth. The great army which I sent among you, or the great wealth which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. We just read that last week. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. We could say that in the midst of the church or in the midst of his temple. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My people shall never be ashamed. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, we read scripture last week. Uh, Zechariah 10 1 says, So here, here, let me say this again. Let me fix this up. Let me read, let me read verse 23 again. I'm not, I'm not confusing anybody. Else. Mm -hmm. be, be, be glad then the children of Zion rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain the former rain and the latter rain in the first or the first month the King James had Thank you, Lord. Thanks so much to this right here. I'm telling you. <laughs> so, uh, okay, when the Lord said that to me 18 years ago, I began to research and inquire into that over and over in months and days and weeks and of studying and researching and praying. And, and you know, when he got to the place with me that he could reveal some more to me, he, I, I said, I, I got to know some things, Lord. I said, what are you trying to say to me? What are we talking about? The former rain and the latter rain. What are we talking about? Now, keep in mind that you can never, never, ever say one a verse of scripture only has one meaning. You can never say that. But this is one of the revelations that this means. Former rain means the prophetic anointing that Elijah walked in. Latter rain, the prophetic anointing Jesus walked in. Okay, real, real quick, see, Elijah and Jesus, uh, they, they dealt with things a little differently. Elijah, when, you know, he called fire down from heaven, he brought, listen to me, he brought, watch this, he brought judgment of God, the judgment of God, the wrath of God, the judgment of God to demonic forces 
or to demonic people that was operating from a demonic form. He called fire down. You know the story. Everybody knows that. Is anybody in here don't know about him calling fire down and burning up the offering and the altar and everything? Everybody knows that, right? I mean, he did that. He stood and said, let these people know that I am your servant. That's what he declared. And fire came down and consumed the sacrifice, the bullocks, and consumed the water, and consumed the stone, and consumed everything. <laughs> the fire of God. This Elijah prophet brought the judgment of God down on down on these demonic situations, right? Now, that's the Elijah former reign anointing, bringing judgment down against the demonic forces, cutting their heads off. He cut the heads off of 850 prophets, prophets of Baal and prophets of the grove, with his sword by himself, in one afternoon. That was a long afternoon, brother. <laughs> Some of the stories from the old uh, Hebrew uh, Hebrew scholars say that he had so much blood on his sword that when he stuck it back in his sheath that he couldn't get it out. Mm -hmm. It was stuck when it dried. That's bringing the judgment of God down, ladies and gentlemen. So one of Elijah, the Elijah task was to bring the judgment of God down on demonic forces. Is that right? Amen. Okay. One of what did Jesus bring? He brought he brought the love of God to earth. He brought the love of God, the gifts of God, the glory of God, and grace and favor. He said he, he loved mercy over sacrifice. Yeah. Here we go. Latter rain, former rain, I mean, Elijah, judgment, when he cut the heads of those 850 prophets off, that represented taking their authority and their power away from them by the sword, which is the word of God. Amen. Sword of the Spirit. When Jesus shows up and he brings the love of God, grace and forgiveness. So here, here's, and now we just read last such. Oh, I gotta hurry. I'm running out of time. We just read last Sunday. I'm sorry, folks. This is this is too good. While we're while we're meditating here, turn to Hosea. Now, James chapter 5, we read that. I think we got toward the end of it. That's where we kind of closed last week. James chapter 5. How many, I'm going to have to say this again. God told me when I started, He said, when you start this, you're going to have to stay with it. And you're going to have to be repetitive. And you're going to have to keep going. And you're going to have to not listen to anybody but me till you get through. And that's when we leave here and follow here. But it says in James chapter 5, in seven verses, it answers all our questions. What, number one, it says in there in James chapter 5, it says the wealth of the wicked I'm, is laid up. Or the way it puts it is the evil people 
have stored up or heaped up. Actually, it says, everybody say heaped. Heaped. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> heaped up treasures for the last day. There are several scriptures that says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So he, James chapter 5, beginning there, it says that, that the wicked has laid up, heaped up, rather, wealth for the last day. How many is ready for the transfer? Amen. I, it, it actually says in there, and I, hey, I got money paid to me that was owed to me for years with this scripture. Anybody interested? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible says in James chapter 5, verse from 1 on a few verses there, it says that the higher, it, it says that the wealth of the wicked has been heaped up, but it also says that they've, they've uh, uh, been abusive to people, I'll put it in my words, and cheated them out of their wages. Does it say that? But it also says that the wages that have been defrauded from you or the compensation or the money. Is anybody listening to me? Yeah. You need to listen right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you don't learn anything else, if you've got money out there that needs to come into you, you need to listen to this right now. The Bible says that that money, now I'm paraphrasing, is crying out in the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Yes. Sabaoth, the Lord of Sabaoth is not the Lamb of God. That's it. That's the line of the tribe of yes. Judah. Amen. The Lord of Sabaoth is the captain of the host that leads the army. Yes. I'm telling you, that money that's owed to you or that money that you're supposed to have, it's crying out to God right now. It says it right there in the Bible. And that would apply to anything else, not just money. Don't shout me down now, because I'm preaching good. Here's what I did, brother, after I heard that, read that scripture and got the revelation of it. I started hollering at the money. <laughs> <laughs> that money's crying out to the Lord of Samuel, it's looking for you. What's it crying out? It's crying out for an opportunity to get in your hands. It's crying out to the in the ears of the Lord of Samuel. I need to get into the hands of the righteous man or woman. I said, here I am. I was going down the road. Can I give you a testimony? I know it's 12 o'clock. But I was going down the road one day on Jeff Road. And I got to thinking about that scripture and I went to crying out, letting that money know where I was at. <laughs> I said, I'm right over here going up north on Jeff Road. <laughs> hey, this is the truth, y'all. Please tell you the truth. If I hadn't told you the truth, but I've been down. <laughs> this is the truth. I'm going up Jeff Road, just past the school over there. And the Lord said, Turn in this next driveway. I mean, I'm crying out to the man. I'm over here. Oh my. And the Lord said, Turn in that driveway. Well, I knew who lived there. But he didn't owe me any money. <laughs> but I turned in the driveway. And he was having, he's a horse man. That's the reason I'm here. But he was having a, a new barn built. And the guy building the barn owed me some money. <laughs> I'm not I thought, well, it's. It's crying out to you, Lord, and I'm crying out for it, but I'm not going to say anything to him. I'm just going to let you have a lift. 
So I just visited with him a few minutes, asked him about the barn, because I was at that time I was about to build another barn. And uh, and so I just got ready to leave and and I just was giving him a nice farewell. And he said, Hey, wait a minute. I think I owe you some money. I said, Yeah, I believe that's right. The great army. Word of God. He reached in his pocket and pulled out cash. I've got some more testimony. I'm running out of time, but I've got some more testimony with that same scripture. I'm over here. You need to send that money to your address. <laughs> or anything else that's been robbed from you. Anything else that the locusts have eaten. Yes. Now that's not all that's in that few verses there. <coughs> and that's a good verse for the speak right there. Talking about throwing them wider rain. Three things that it says in the seven verses there that we all want if we're a good Christian. We want to transfer the wealth for the just. We want the great harvest of souls. They've been talking about great harvest of souls for years and hundreds of years. And, and, the, and there's, been, there's a great harvest happening right now. But we're talking about this masses of people coming to the Lord. And then the other thing that all good Christians is supposed to want is for the Lord to come back. Amen. Right? Yes. Get us out of this mess, Lord. He said, no, I'm trying to get you ready to turn it around. <laughs> He's trying to get you ready to fix this mess. So those three things, the transfer of the wealth, the great harvest of souls, and the coming of the Lord, that takes that pretty much takes care of my Christian desires. You need the money to get the uh, great harvest. And the Bible says that the husbandman, speaking of Jesus, in those verses, wait is waiting patiently. Here you go. Did I see it? Yes. Be patient. He said, be patient now. Until the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it. Everybody say unto you. He is the early and the latter right. <laughs> Everything in that I just mentioned, you can back up and read from verse 1 to 7. All those three things are wrapped up in that. And if the, and if the early rain is that Elijah anointing that brings judgment to the demonic forces, and the latter rain is that Jesus anointing that brings love to the people. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> carried away. I didn't talk about that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. If that's true, we need to get busy here and become that transitional prophet that judges the demonic forces and with the word of God cuts their authority and power and their head, which represents their lordship headship. We need to be those kind of John the Baptist prophets. <laughs> Did you, do you see what he said about that? Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Let me read. It's, it's four minutes after 12. Can you take a little bit more minutes? Let, let me give you something here. Hosea is one of my favorite books. Uh, in Hosea, in 4, Hosea 4, verse 6, is one of my 
go to the scripture. He says, my people are destroyed. Destroyed. Not just bruised or wounded. Destroyed. My people are destroyed. Why? For a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me, saying, Thou hast forgotten the law of God or the word of God. And I will also forget thy children. Now you gotta read through the book of Hosea to find out that he says, But I'm not gonna forget you. And you're gonna be my children. See the book in the book of Hosea, it's a prophetic parabolic. It's a parabolic prophecy. It's a prophet prophecy of parables. And then, uh, and then when when Hosea was, he told Hosea to go marry a harlot, right? Well, that was Israel. That that was Israel because they were going after other gods. Well, he he told. Him, when she would leave after other lovers, he said, go get her and have another child and name the child so and so. And so he, so he kept going after her and bringing her back home. He named, he told, God told Hosea what to name all of his children. And their names had a meaning. Uh, their names, if you put their names together, one of them's name meant the valley of destruction. One of, them's, one of the, them's name meant, you're not my people. And one of them, the other one's name meant, I'll not have mercy on you. <laughs> so now when you see Hosea's family coming down the road, <laughs> here comes a little valley of destruction. Here comes, you're not going to be God's people. But the end of Hosea, he says, you will not be destroyed, and you will be my people, and I'll have mercy on you forever. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Shall I do one more? And this is may seem off the subject, but it's not. Verse chapter 6 of Hosea. I get so excited every time I read this. <laughs> chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, he will heal us. He hath smitten, he will bind us up. Watch this. Everybody here should know this. Pay attention to the wording. After two days, he will revive us. I want to point out this. I always point this out. You cannot be revived unless you've been vived. <laughs> you get that? You have to have been vived or made alive at least once before you can be revived. Is that true? <laughs> After two days, he will revive us. Peter said, a day with the Lord's a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. So if that is true, you could read this after 2,000 years. Uh, it is after 2,000 years right now. Christ came, and it's after 2,000 years. In after, if I say after two days, after two days, in the third day, if I say in the third, in day. the third day, it's not after three days, it's in yeah. the third day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> after the third day, he will do what? Raise us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
in the third day, not after the third day. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a report. You're in the third day right now. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're in the third day right now. Mm -hmm. And not after the third day, but in the third day, Mary came to the tomb of Jesus early in the morning while it was still dark on the third day. Then, after two days, he'll revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, prepared as the morning, early in the morning. And he came unto us as the the latter and the former rain of the earth. That's John and Jesus. I got P-I-B-B -B down here. <laughs> Prophetic intercessory burden bearing prayer. Thank you, Lord. I'd love to just keep going. <laughs> I, that's, this is only just a fraction of this stuff that I've got to do. But I pray you got something out of it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I won't, let me, let's, let's decree these prayers one more time. Now, okay, now, are we going to be the former and latter rain that Jesus said in John and James 5 7? That these three things I just mentioned, he's waiting patiently until he receives the Elijah anointing and the Jesus anointing, or the former rain and the latter rain. When you're in your prayer closet, you cut the heads off of the demonic forces. Amen. Amen. You bring judgment on the midst of the demonic forces. Amen. When you're in front of some poor little person, you operate in the anointing, the prophetic anointing of Jesus, that love of God. Yeah. See, when it says that nobody had seen God in John first, that's not. You just can't stop it right there because you can go back in Scripture and find where people saw God. But nobody's seen God as the Son of God, the love of God. Nobody had seen God's love like that. Let's pray. Make these decree. First off, we're going to command all creation to worship God and praise God. Yeah, yeah. Because you're supposed to be anyway. Thank you, Lord. We're going to decree this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, you save me from my enemies. You protect me from those who come against me. You save me from those who do evil and from murderers. You are my God, my strength, and I am looking to you because you are my defender. Thank you, Lord. You love me and you go in front of me and you will help me defeat my enemies. I rebuke and loose myself and my family from all evil curses, all evil spells, all evil incantations. And all evil psychic powers or sorcery that have attached itself to me and my family line, I declare all these curses are null and void. I break off every power of the kingdom of darkness and we cancel every pride idea in the heavens that has established itself against your plans in my life and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In 
Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Jesus. Jesus name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.